Hey everybody, it's Margo here and in today's video we are going to be going over some ways that you can save money while you are traveling. Now most of the travels that I have personally done have been budget trips. So I'd like to think that I have quite a bit of experience in this realm and that I can offer you some pretty good tips on how to save money while you travel. If you're interested in learning about these tips, then please keep on watching. Alright, so I've kind of divided these tips up into two different sections. One being things that you can do before you leave for your trip, and then the second section will be things that you can do while you are actually on your trip. So we'll start with the things that you can do before, logically, um, and the first thing that I think that you can do in order to save money for your trips is to get creative with booking flights. So what I have found most people do and what I often do when I'm trying to book flights to another country is that I will punch in my current location and then my destination in Google Flights and then that uh, software will kind of amalgamate all of the flight options that you have and it will give you the cheapest one. And while I do think that that works in a lot of instances, when I actually went to Croatia, looking up uh, you know, Saskatoon, where I'm from, to Croatia, it would only ever give me like one-way flights that were around $13 to $1,500. So you're looking at about $3,000 that you'd be spending just on flights to get there and get back home. And so I kind of had to get a bit creative with that to try and save money on these flights because they were so expensive. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up looking up flights from Saskatoon to London in the UK and then flying from there through a budget airline to get to Croatia. In doing that, I saved, I think, uh, it was a, in the end a one-way flight averaged about $700 so we spent about $1,400 round trip on those flights so it pretty much cut the price in half and that's why I would recommend getting creative with booking your flights you know maybe you'll have to do a stopover somewhere maybe you'll have to book a multi-city flight but just know that the suggestions that Google Flights will give you is not always the best option if you're wanting to save money so yeah, definitely get creative and stay flexible with the flights that you're booking. The next way that I think you can save money on your trip is by going to your destination in the off season. Now, everybody knows that prices generally are inflated when demand is higher. So when people are going to say, uh, as an example, Mexico in the winter months, obviously prices to get all-inclusive uh, trips to Mexico during that time will be more expensive than they would be say in July because July it's either rainy or way too hot and it's just not generally a time that people would want to go to Mexico. Now I'm not saying that you have to go the polar opposite route and go in the complete off season, but even going on the earlier end of the peak season or the late end of the peak season um, is really beneficial because you get to save money, you get to avoid crowds, and there are actually just a lot of benefits to that. So that's how I've also saved money while traveling to various countries. The third tip that I have for you guys is to get a credit card that doesn't have international fees. To my understanding, credit cards can charge you international fees in two ways. One of the ways that they'll charge you sometimes is a percentage of your purchases. So lots of credit cards will charge, you know, two or three percent uh, of your purchases for having you know made those purchases in another country so that would mean that for every hundred dollars that you would spend if the international fee was three percent you would be paying an additional three dollars to the credit card company and i mean that isn't horrible in of itself but where it can really get tricky is when credit cards charge you a flat rate per transaction so to my knowledge, some credit cards will charge you $1.50 or something like that per transaction. Meaning that if you get a $2 coffee at a Starbucks, 
well you're not actually paying two dollars for that you're actually paying 350 if you are paying for it through your credit card so that definitely isn't ideal and i know that there are lots of credit card options that have very very low international fees or no international fees so definitely investigate that before you go on your trip talk to your bank and see if there's something that they can offer you so that you can save that little bit of money and have peace of mind while you're in another country the next tip that i have for you guys is that it's a good idea to bring everything that you're going to need on your trip with you rather than purchasing it when you get there now this doesn't necessarily apply for every single toiletry every single thing that you plan on bringing but what I found was that um, for something like say makeup I was able to just package everything in a smaller package from what I already had and take that with me rather than having to purchase you know full-size products when I got there it saves you time and it saves you money, of course. Another example that I have is sunscreen. So when I went to Thailand for four months, I actually brought enough sunscreen to last me that four months. And in the end, I didn't really need much, but what I did find was that Oddly enough, uh, sunscreen was one of the things that actually was kind of expensive in Thailand, whereas most other things were not. And I think that's because that is something that a tourist would generally purchase when they landed or when they got to Thailand. So things like that, it's worth keeping in mind that it might be a better idea to just take it with you rather than purchase it when you get there. And oftentimes those things are things that you already have in your house. So you won't have to, you know, spend that added money to get something that you already have at home. So definitely consider, you know, packing all of the things that you think you're gonna need before you get there rather than just buying it once you land. Okay, the next tip that I have for you is to pack light. And I know I probably sound like a broken record. I've said this in other videos and everybody else who has, you know, travel tips will say this. Packing light is beneficial in a lot of ways, but the way that I wanna talk about today is baggage fees. So many airlines will charge you very high prices to bring, you know, checked luggage. And what I found worked best, depending of course on the duration of your travels, but what I found worked best for me was to literally pack light enough that I could carry everything that I needed on a carry-on and take it with me on the plane. So that saved me in one of my trips, I think I probably saved $400 in baggage fees and I know that sounds insane but when you are going on budget airlines when you are traveling around Europe for example um, those things add up so quickly and just being able to not have to check a bag can save you hundreds of dollars so I know it's painful to pack light and it's hard to leave so much at home and not bring you know what you might think is essential but really reconsider what you need on your trip and try to pack as light as possible so that you can avoid those baggage fees the next tip that i have for you kind of relates to booking your accommodations before you actually arrive at your destination I think it's really important to spend the time to look at where your accommodations are and what things you want to see in certain cities. So the closer that you can stay to certain uh, spots that you're wanting to visit, the better. And of course, staying in the middle of a city might um, be more expensive than staying on the outskirts of the city, but you also have to consider those transport costs that you're going to incur once you get there. And is that worth you know, saving that extra certain amount of money for staying in an Airbnb or a hotel that's a bit off the beaten path. Um, there's no real right answer for this. I think this just, you need to do a bit of research on your own to figure out whether it is a good idea to just stay in city center, spend that little bit extra money to, you know, have a more central accommodation or does it make more sense just to stay off the beaten path on the outskirts of the city and then commute in to see what you want to see? So as an example, you know, if you're going to Paris, it might not make sense for you to spend, um, 
insane amounts of money to stay in the city center when it's so easy and so affordable to just take the underground rail, the underground train, you know, so it really does depend on the place. It depends what you want to do, but definitely consider, you know, the transport costs that you'll incur from staying in an accommodation further away um, or, you know, just, just look into that. That's really important. There's no right answer for that, but it's really gonna depend on your trip and what you want to do. But you know, the more you can plan for that and the better accommodation you can get for your money, the more you're gonna save money. The next tip that I have for you is a very simple one, and that is to bring a portable water bottle. Now I know that this sounds kind of obvious, but I actually didn't bring a portable water bottle on one of my backpacking trips, and I found that I spent quite a bit of money getting bottled water here and there. Uh, I was reusing bottles of water, and I was trying to stuff them in my purse so they were all wrinkled and you know they started leaking because I was squeezing them too much. So what I would recommend is to go on Amazon and get a flat water bottle so that it can be rolled up into your backpack when you don't need it. And then whenever you see a water fountain of any kind, you can easily fill it up and hang it next to your backpack. Um, I've found one on Amazon that I think would be awesome for traveling when you don't have that much space, so I can definitely link it down below. Um, but yeah, that actually won't save you uh, an abundant amount of money, but it could probably save you about 50 bucks if you consider you know, the inflated prices of bottled water in certain touristy uh, hot spots. Okay, so now I want to move on to the tips that I have for you that you can implement while you are at your destination. So the first tip that I have for you is to avoid eating near tourist hotspots whenever you can. An example that I have for you is um, I was once in Paris and I had just checked out the Eiffel Tower and wanted a coffee. So I walked about two blocks away from the Eiffel Tower, ordered a simple coffee, and that coffee ended up costing me $10 Canadian. And it was just because it was close to the Eiffel Tower. There was nothing special about the coffee. It was just flat out expensive. Um, and that will happen pretty much everywhere. The further away you get from a touristy hotspot, the better. Um, they're gonna charge you less, you're gonna get more bang for your buck, and it's not that hard to just walk, you know, instead of walking two blocks, walk five or six, and that will make a big difference. So definitely avoid those touristy hotspots when you can. So the next tip that I have for you while you are at your destination is to consider all of your options in terms of transportation. So this of course varies dependent on the city you're in, um, if you're in a smaller town or something like that, but definitely look into things like Uber, taxis, public transportation, whether or not you can walk to certain destinations that you're wanting to check out. You know, definitely just look at all of your transportation options because sometimes tr public transportation in a city is so affordable and other times it's really not much cheaper than taking a taxi. For example, when I was in Thailand, taking a taxi was so simple, it was so affordable, and that was pretty much always our best option. They also had an app similar to Uber called Grab, and we would use that majority of the time. Um, and then if you look at something like London, the tube was by far the easiest way to get around, and it was also much cheaper than taking a taxi. So definitely consider all of your options. Um, bear in mind that where you are will very much depend on which of these options is cheapest. And yeah, just be aware of your options for transportation. The next tip that I have kind of goes hand in hand with the last one, and that is to just walk whenever you can and try and prepare yourself for lots of walking. So this, again, depends on where you are, but lots of times you can easily walk, you know, 30 minutes to get to a destination and that is totally free rather than spending, you know, $40 on a taxi. So I recommend um, trying to consider that when you can and preparing for that. So, you know, bring comfy shoes, bring comfy clothing so that walking isn't quite as treacherous as it might otherwise be. So the second to last tip that I have for you is to look for free or donation-based activities.
You can't find these very easily everywhere per se. But again, we'll use the example of going to London. When I was in London, there were tons of museums that were donation based. So you could go into the museum, you know, make a donation that you were able to make, uh, whether that be, you know, two pounds or 10 pounds, um, make your donation and then you have this beautiful museum that you can explore for hours. Um, there might not be, you know, tons of options in every city like this, but you can also, you know, walk to parks, go through parks, uh, just look up free things that you can do in your area and you might surprise yourself. I'm sure lots of the free things that are offered in the cities or the places that you're wanting to go to, they actually probably have lots of free things that you can do. So definitely look into those things if you're wanting to save a bit of money here and there. My last tip that I have for you today is to skip a meal or two every single day. Now, by saying skip a meal or two every day, I don't mean don't eat, but I mean purchase some things from a grocery store, purchase some you know, granola bars, things that you can have for breakfast, things that you can even have for lunch, get some fruit, and that will save you so much money in the long run. That's what we ended up doing when I went to Croatia with a couple of my friends, was we would try and you know snack throughout the entire day and then have a nice meal for supper or for dinner. And that's what I found worked awesome for us, especially when you're in a location where you don't really uh, get super excited about the food. That's not really the focal point of your trip. Um, it's very easy to save money by not eating out. So definitely consider that. All right, I think I've talked your guys' ears off enough for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any other tips or any other ideas on ways that people can save money while they're traveling, please feel free to comment them down below so other people can check that out and learn more on how to save money while they're traveling. If you like this video, please do give me a like. Please subscribe if you wanna see more of my content and we'll see you next week. See ya.